Hi, and welcome to Earth and Body Ecosystems. Join us as we bridge the gap between the body and the earth that surrounds us. I am Joyce Wheeler. Heidi is not here today. She's not feeling well, but we're going to go on anyway. And whatever you're listening to, remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, let us know what kind of shows you would like to see in the future. Visit my website, majesticterror.com. Go to shop. You can get go for organic skincare products, shungites, and other items. So yeah, go check that out. All right. So today we have with us Brenda Kate. She's a hypnotist, speaker, and entertainer. Brenda performs interactive comedy hypnosis shows around the world. She brings the fun when it comes to using the power of the mind to create positive changes. She shares her passion for hypnosis with over 20 years experience, empowering minds and transforming the lives of thousands worldwide at schools, corporate events, casinos, and luxury cruise ships. Welcome to the show, Brenda. Thank you so much for having me, Joyce. So tell me, how did you get started with hypnosis? You know, it was totally by accident. I had just dropped out of college and I was looking for my purpose in life. You know, where do I want to go? What's my direction? And I happened upon a, a sign at a street fair in Boulder, Colorado that said free hypnosis. And being a poor college student at the time, anything free caught my eye. Right. So whenever I said, what's this hypnosis and how do I get it for free? Because I really had no clue other than what I had seen in the movies and on TV about hypnosis. And that could be a little scary. Um, but she said, you know, we're, uh, we are a hypnosis school. We're looking for guinea pigs for our students to practice on. And if you agree to let them hypnotize you, then you can work on whatever you want. And I nice. said, what does it do? And she explained, you know, you can use it to change habits, to stop smoking, to get rid of fears and phobias, to lose weight. And all of that sounded cool. But uh, what was more important to me at the time was finding my purpose in life, finding direction. And I said, can hypnosis help me do that? And she said, I don't know, but you could try. And so I signed up and in one of the sessions I had my Oprah aha moment. And I just knew that hypnosis is what I wanted to do with my life. Hey, that's really cool. So yeah. did, you, did you let one of the students hypnotize you? Yeah, so I had to commit to six sessions and I was so oh. nervous. I was so scared. Um, but the first time we met, she explained to me what hypnosis was, what it wasn't. And so I, I came in with an open, optimistic attitude. And, and it wasn't until my third session that I really had that, that aha moment where I settled in and I got comfortable with the process. And then after that, I was like, this stuff is good. Like, what's next? <laughs> So share with our listening audience, Brenda, what is hypnosis and what is it not? Oh, yes. Well, hypnosis is a very normal, natural state of mind. It's a state of awareness that we're in and out of all day long, whether we realize it or not. I like to explain it best by it being that twilight zone in between full waking consciousness and deep asleep. It's that zone that you go into as you're drifting off to sleep or when you're lost in a good book or a good movie uh, where time kind of stands still. And when you're in this level of mind, your your mind is more open and receptive to suggestions or new ideas and and that's what we do with the hypnotherapy we we use that part of your mind to create what it is you want and to help you delete the things that you don't want um so hypnosis happens normally and naturally it's something that we can all do and if we work with it intentionally we can use it for our greater good so what it is not is pretty much everything you see in the movies. Uh, it's not mind control. The hypnotist can't make you do anything that you don't want to do, anything that would compromise your morals and beliefs. You just wouldn't do it. Um, it's not... It's not woo-woo, if you would. You know, it's not something that's not real or, <laughs> you know, it's an absolute real thing, whether you believe in it or not, it still happens. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing. It's, it's not woo woo. It's not scary. The only reason it's scary is because you don't understand what it really is. Right. right. And it's as humans, we fear what we don't know. 
Right. And so learning about it and learning that it puts you actually in more control of your own mind um, than anything. That's 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 where a real power is. So a hypnotist can't make me act like a chicken if I don't want to. No, if you don't want to. But if you don't mind it, <laughs> you know, you wouldn't accept a suggestion that wouldn't benefit you on some level. Um, now, if you know, I do have to to say that hypnosis helps to lower your inhibitions just a little so you're a little more free to do goofy things so if it didn't if you didn't mind clucking like a chicken then you might if you thought that was the dumbest thing i could ever have you do then you just wouldn't because oh and that's it hypnosis this is not sleep you're not in a zombie like state a lot of people think that when you go into hypnosis that you don't know what's going on and it's not like that at all. You're aware of what's going on when you're doing it. Um, in fact, you're more hyper aware. All of your senses are more, are more. <laughs> you're just more aware right. of everything. Um, so you're you're not asleep. You're you're conscious. You're just at a different level. Um, so yeah. And 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 I've had people. You know, I do a stage hypnosis show. I have people. I give them a suggestion, and they just don't do it. And I've even been hypnotized in shows and I'm like, I'm not doing that in front of all of these people. <laughs> and so you just don't do it. You can make that choice and still stay in hypnosis. Now, if it's something really bad, like if I gave you a suggestion to, you know, take your clothes off and go run around the neighborhood naked, you probably wouldn't do it unless that's something that you would do normally. And if you no. felt really offended by that, you would just, you could come out of hypnosis at any time and be like, Brenda, you're crazy not going to do it. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. So let's talk about the subconscious mind. I hear a, a lot of talk about that our subconscious mind is actually more active than our conscious mind. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, 90, they say between 90 and 95% of our behaviors or what we're doing is in our subconscious. And then the right. rest is our conscious, analytical, rational thinking mind. So I like to think of our subconscious as kind of like our operating system, like on your computer or on your phone. It's just calculating everything in the background. It's running your entire body's processes, your, your breathing, your digestion, your circulation, all of that. And it's also the where we keep our thoughts, our habits, our beliefs, and our behaviors, and all of our emotions. And so it really is the, the very core of who we are and how we function. Well, I hear people, you know, especially when it comes to manifesting, talking about that you have to change your subconscious. And earlier you were talking about that state of mind, like when your phone is asleep or when you're waking up. And when I'm waking up, that's when I tend to try to change my subconscious mind. So not sure how well I'm doing at that, but I'm working on it. Yeah. And really, that is the best time before you go to sleep and when you wake up. It's the best time to plant. I like to call it planting the seeds of the things that you want. Right. Um, so focusing on the things that you want rather than the things that you don't want. So you wake up and you think, yeah, today's going to be a great day and I feel good. I have a lot of energy or, you know, money is coming my way, whatever you want to, whatever you want to manifest. Yes. I love that. <laughs> you know, abundance is flowing to me now. Say right. those, say those positive intentions when you when you first wake up and when you first go to bed. And that's that's a great way to start reprogramming your mind, absolutely. But I also hear that you, utilizing all the senses, like I, my goal is to have a health and wellness spa. So when mm -hmm. I wake up, I see myself at the spa. I see the people coming in that I'm helping. I see the lab of the, of the spa. I see classes going on. I see workshops going on. I see speakers. So I'm seeing all this in my head. I, I, I see the, the health bar where people are juicing and uh, just all this really fun stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a part of it too. Yes. Yeah. Or is it, do we not have to do that? You know, seeing it is great, but not everybody is visual. 
So you mm -hmm. don't have to be able to visualize it, but the more senses you can incorporate it. So think about when you're creating that vision, also, how does it make you feel? Right. Are you excited about it? Are you anxious about it? Are you doubtful about it? Because whatever feeling you're putting behind that vision is, is going to escalate it or de-escalate, you know, empower it or pull it back. Right. Um, and that, that, that's something I wanted to ask you too, with hypnosis, if somebody really doesn't want to do it, they want to do it because they know they should, mm -hmm. you know, you had mentioned like it could help you stop smoking. So what if somebody really didn't want to stop smoking? Could they be hypnotized to stop smoking? Um, they can be hypnotized, but they, if they really didn't want to do it, then they wouldn't accept the suggestion or the new ideas. And that's why when people call the office and they say, Brenda, can you get my husband to stop smoking? And they try to make the appointment for them. I'm like, you can have your husband call me because, you know, if you get that spouse dragging in the other one and they're like, I don't really want to do it, then they won't. Right. They just, you, you, you can accept or reject any suggestion at any time. So we really, before we start working with somebody, we really have to sh be sure that's something that they really want to do. And then the now, hypnosis is just a catalyst to make it happen for you. And now what if they're skeptical? What if they're like, I want to do this, I want to try doing it, but I'm really not sure it's going to work on me. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, I, I like to say there's different levels of skepticism or skeptics. There's, there's the people that are like, oh no, this isn't for me. It's not going to work at all. And they're just poo-pooing and there's just no way. And, and a lot of those people will put up this subconscious block. They just won't let it happen no matter what. But then there's the, the healthy or open skeptic. Like, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm willing to try. Um, and so for those people, you know, it can work. And, and when I would do my shows, a lot of people, when I pick people out of the audience, I pick people that want to do it um, because I'm looking for willing people. But then they'll tell me afterwards, you know, they said, Brenda, I didn't believe that this would work for me. I was pretty skeptical. And they're usually the people that go the deepest and are really, really? the most receptive to it. It's, it's a weird phenomenon that they're like, I didn't think you could get me but it worked. <laughs> so in the beginning, you mentioned having to go through six sessions. So is that the norm or is everybody different? You know, everybody's different. I think they did six sessions just because they wanted their students to, to get a lot of training under their belts okay. and to be able to deal with different things. You know, hypnosis for therapy, hypnotherapy is a really pretty rapid change modality. It depends on what you're working on. But, you know, when I would work with smokers, I would see them typically for one session. We'd get in there, we'd delete really? the program, they're just done. Yeah. But there's things like weight where you can't just take away food, like you could take away the need for a cigarette. You have to hit it from some different angles. And for that, we like to gauge between four to 12 sessions. So it really just depends on the person and what it is they want to work on. But, you know, rather than spending years in therapy, you can, you can make, you can make profound changes in a handful of sessions. What about somebody who's looking to become pregnant? Oh, I'm so glad you asked because uh, one of my mentors is, has created a hypnofertility program and she created it over 20 years ago and it's just evolved and blossomed into something so fantastic um, over the recent years. So absolutely you can use hypnosis to get pregnant and she has a, a 12 session program. So it works um, through the process you know, of getting pregnant through the pregnancy and beyond. And okay. really, when, when, I, when I had looked at your website, that really intrigued me with the fertility part. My daughter mm -hmm. has PCOS. Are you familiar mm -hmm. with that? Just a little bit. Okay. It, it's basically a hormonal thing. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm wondering if somebody's hormones are out of whack, can it still work for them? Absolutely. Because really? your subconscious is the part of your mind that regulates the hormones, right? 
And True. so you can go in there and you can create that balance. You know, our subconscious mind knows what we want and what we need to function properly, but so often we're not giving it the space to heal or to balance. And hypnosis does that. It allows your mind and body the space to recalibrate, to reconnect, to let go of the blocks, uh, let go of the imbalance and regulate. So absolutely. Um, you know, people that were diagnosed infertile for no good reason have still been able to get pregnant using, you know, just by balancing out their mind, body and spirit connection too. That mm. that's a, that's a part of it that a lot of medical treatments don't address. You know, there's that, that other element. there's that magic, you know, you can't just get pregnant through science, right? The baby still has to grow and there's still a whole process that's innate right. within our bodies that our body has the, the, the capacity to do. So you mentioned the program, you said it was a 12 step, 12 sessions, not 12, oh, 12, steps. 12 <laughs> steps. I meant to say sessions, but yeah, we can take okay. some steps too. You know, we can, we can take steps there. Absolutely. So yeah, it's 12 sessions. The do people sometimes need more or less? You know, we find that even if they get pregnant, say in uh, the first couple sessions, they still have a whole pregnancy to go through and the hypnosis can help, help make it easier. And, and they can even use it beyond, um, you know, after, after with the birthing. And so, so you can use the 12 sessions however you want, but we find a lot of people, they complete the 12 sessions and they just love it so much. They love that they can work on other things in, you know, being a better parent or just stress, re stress reduction, relaxation. So a lot of people will book more than 12 sessions. So it I noticed, really just depends on the person. I noticed that you have some hypnosis, I don't know what to call them, programs on your website mm -hmm. for, for different things. Yeah. So what I have on my website are just pre-recorded audios that you can download. So it's like hypnosis in your earbuds It's or hypnosis on demand. It's just some of my most popular programs pre-recorded that you can listen to and and get some benefit from you know they're they're general suggestions for weight for sleep for stress and smoking and things like that so can is this something that you can do uh long distance like we're talking on zoom that you can you know if somebody is in another country and they want to work with you can they Absolutely. So I've found that in the past 18 months, uh, since we've had to, we've been forced to learn how to work virtually, that hypnosis does work really well virtually because the, the magic of hypnosis and the transformation happens in your own mind. And whether you're sitting in an office or you're sitting in the comfort of your own home, as long as you can close your eyes and listen to me, then it can absolutely work. So I've transitioned my entire practice to online. So, so let's talk works. about your, uh, your comedy hypnosis show. I'm curious about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. You know, I started doing the hypnosis shows as a means for advertising my private practice. I wanted nice. as much people, as many people to know about the power of the mind. And I wanted to dispel the myths and misconceptions about hypnosis and, and do so in a fun and entertaining way. And so I started doing the shows, but it was, it was my goal and my dream from high school. I wanted to travel the world like a rock star and, and do what I love. And once I learned hypnosis and I learned that you could plant those seeds, you know, your goals and, and manifest what you want. I started repeating that suggestion, you know, and I said, when I, I would put myself into hypnosis and I'd say, you know, I want to travel the world like a rock star. I want to live like I'm on vacation and all those things. And then it, and then it manifested in the opportunity. I met a guy that was working on cruise ships and he said, Hey, have you ever thought about taking your show out to sea? And, and I said, that sounds exactly like what I've always wanted to do. They'll pay me to cruise and see the world and yeah, sign me up. And so I did it. So I had the opportunity for 13 years to perform a show. 
and just have fun with hypnosis. I would get volunteers from the audience. I'd bring them on stage and we would have fun suggestions and have them, you know, playing a piano or think they're a rock star or talking in an alien language and then somebody translating it or having them um, miss a body part or, oh, you know, or, or have, one of my favorites is having their butts glued to their seats and then having them try to get up. So just having a little fun with it was, is, was really entertaining. It sounds exciting to be able to do what you want and to be able to travel the world. How long did it take you to manifest that? Oh, man. So um, I trained in 2001 and the opportunity unfolded in 2007. Wow. Yeah. Now, were you doing it all that time? Were you changing your subconscious thoughts that whole time from 2001 to 2007? Yeah, once I learned hypnosis and uh, in my training, we would learn we would learn how to do something and we would practice on each other. And so I would do it to you, you would do it to me. And so I had a lot of experience with hypnosis and I was always working on those things. And so I feel that throughout that whole process, I was taking the steps to get to where I needed to go. And even though it didn't happen as quickly as I would have wanted it to, you know, it worked out in just the right way in just the right time. Because I, when I started, I was totally terrified of public speaking. Like mm -hmm. I didn't want to be in front of an audience. I didn't want to be on stage, but I had a desire to share this amazing tool with the world. And so I had to learn how to get over that. And so I used hypnosis to um, be a better public speaker. I took acting classes, improv classes, all of that to help prepare me for that opportunity. So I think it, looking back, it worked out um, in just the right way. I like improv. Improv is a lot of fun. And it's, yeah. it, it's, it's great to, um, to use when you are speaking to be, you know, making you more comfortable with speaking. I had gone to a speaker's retreat and there was a woman there who was into improv. And mm -hmm. so during the retreat, we were working on our, um, I, don't, I think it was an inter introduction. It was something we were working on. Well, she, she created this deck for improv and then she would pull a card and we would have to say it like in another character. So I had to do it as a evangelical speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> it was fun. That's, yeah, and it, it forces you out of your comfort zone. But, yeah. but at, the same, at the same time, I think especially for like people who are shy that, it, it, that improv is a good thing because you're pretending to be or do something else rather than yourself. And sometimes, you know, we're more comfortable like that. And I think that goes back to the subconscious, you know, as to what we're being told and, and whatnot. And speaking on that, you know, a lot, a lot of what's going on to these days that I hear about is how tra trauma manifests itself in our lives. So if I have trauma that I don't know about, would hypnosis work for that? Absolutely, because your subconscious is your long-term memory and everything right. that has, you've ever experienced is stored in this part of your mind. Mm -hmm. So you can go back and reframe that trauma and release the the emotions uh, and the connections or the hold that it has over you. Absolutely. That's something that you can do now. Um, there's different techniques so that it's not that you're going back and re-experiencing all of that again, because who would want to do that? Right. Right. Um, so there's just different techniques to be able to release that almost like clean it up and then set yourself free from it. So so I like to say that, you know, your subconscious mind has all the answers. We just have to give it the opportunity to um, ask it the right questions and to resolve what it needs to. Yeah, because I wonder if I've got unresolved trauma that's like holding me back from what I want. If I, you know, as far as my mind goes, 
I have forgiven. You know, I, I don't hold any grudges. It's like, it is what it is. You know, anything that I've been through in my, through in my life, I feel it's just made me the person that I am. And mm-hmm. I would easily do it again. Mm-hmm. But I'm just wondering, you know, hearing about how trauma will just stay in your body. And so I'm like, okay, well, how am I supposed to get this out? How do I know if I still even have it? When as far as I'm concerned, in my mind, everything's fine. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not, you know, I'm not thinking about it. I'm not like, oh, that person was horrible. So like, what about that as far as the subconscious goes? If we feel like everything all taken care of, but there's still things in our lives that aren't the way that we want them. Does that go back to the subconscious? I would say so. And, you know, our subconscious is, is, it, you know, when we're doing the work, it's like we're peeling back the layers of an onion. So just when you think maybe you or you, you got it all, there might be another layer that's still keeping us blocked or or even more so like thinking of it of a garden, you know, you're plucking the weeds, but sometimes you don't get out that deeper root of the weed and then it grows back a little. So you have to go in and do some more tending to your garden. So sometimes those, even even though we feel like when we've dealt with everything and everything's fine, we might have missed some of those roots. Yeah, it, yeah, it could be, or it could be just that what we're asking for, we're not asking for in the right way. Mm-hmm. You know, there there are words that will sabotage our best efforts that we're not even aware of or just things ways patterns of thinking and speaking that that sabotage us yeah so let's talk about that for a minute about you know how important our words are and how that how it affects our subconscious and how it affects the things that we're trying to achieve in in our in our lives Mm -hmm. well you know, our subconscious just, it takes orders. It just does, it, it's, it's our goal achieving mechanism. It just does, it takes commands, right? Um, so if we're, what we're constantly thinking about and speaking about, it just says, okay, this is who we are. This is what we do. This is how we do it. It just does, it takes the orders. So, you know, there, there's, when I talk about words that sabotage, when we talk, when we say that we're going to try to do something, you know, I'm going to try to manifest this. I'm going to try to make more money. I'm going to try to get to the gym five days a week. I'm going to try to build this business. Try to the subconscious implies failure. It gives you an out. It gives you a reason not to do something. And if, if your subconscious doesn't have to do anything different, then it just won't. So it, that one word really gets in our way. Um, I, never, I never thought about that word try mm-hmm. as or my perceiving it as failure. And I'm very particular, very not particular. I'm very conscious about the words that I choose. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to get my husband there. Because he'll be like, I can't afford that. And I said, no, 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 it's not in the budget. So me saying it's not in the budget, is that a good thing to say? Well, thank you for that lead in because the word not is the other sabotaging word. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so, so let me first, so you want to frame whatever you want in a positive way. When you're using the word not, it's not positive. Um, wow. think about it when you tell a kid not to do something, what do they do? They do the thing, right? right? That you just told them not to. Or if a waiter puts a plate in front of you and says, don't touch this, it's hot. What do you do? You touch it, right? For the most part, even though <laughs> he just us. told you not to, you touch it because something funny happens in your mind called farcing and your mind skips over the words, not don't and can't. So what you're really hearing is the opposite. So when the waiter says, don't touch this, it's hot. In your brain, you hear, touch this, it's hot. (laughs) That's why you do it. Or (laughs) how many times have you said, I'm not gonna eat the whole bag of cookies and you have the very best intention to not eat the whole bag of cookies. But what have you just told yourself? I'm gonna eat the whole bag of cookies. So you do it. 
So you have to, when you catch yourself saying not, is decide, is this something I want to do or not? And then tell yourself that you're going to do it. So rather than saying it's not in the budget, you could say, um, oh, what would be a good, the budget. Mm, the budget doesn't what, allow. Because doesn't still is do not. Uh. So we'll see if we can work it into the budget. Mm or let's make it fit into the budget or how can we fit into the budget? I like that one yeah. because it's, it's more positive. It's saying we're going to do this. Yes, absolutely. And that's actually called an affirmation. When you ask your mind a question, it likes to solve, find the answers. So let's we, see how we can make this fit in the budget. Right, or, or we're gonna we... make it fit in the budget. <laughs> Yeah, that's, ooh, that's even more powerful, positive intention. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I guess now I'm going to have to be more, more mindful when I'm saying that <laughs> because I've been saying it for so long and I didn't realize that not was such a negative word and how my subconscious views it. So yeah. you, said, you said not, doesn't, don't. So uh, all of the not derivatives, if that's how you say it, not, don't, can't. Okay, can't. Doesn't, any of the negatives, the not negatives. <laughs> I never saw not as a negative before. Right, right. You know, it's like we say things like that's not true, mm -hmm. you know, or mm -hmm. give, give another example of how we use not and it doesn't seem like it's, well, that's not true as a negative phrase. Huh. Or we say and, things like that. Go on. Oh, go ahead. We say things like that. That's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Like when we're doing something like we're doing a puzzle, maybe, and we're trying to find that piece. And then we mm -hmm. get there and it's like, oh, that's not going to work. Because it's obvious that the piece isn't different. Wow, that's really funny how we say things and we don't even really think about how the subconscious mind is processing it. Right. And the subconscious mind is so literal, it can't take a joke. I know. I tell my husband that all the time. He's as a matter of fact, I was at, over at the college, like I said, they do a, a market every every month and somebody had said something oh they, they said something about how much this has cost and I was I have a good sense of humor I love to have fun I love to joke I love making people laugh and jokingly I was going to say you're first born and then I went oh. Ooh, and I said oh that's no that's not a good thing to say especially these <laughs> days with just so much going on with the, them human trafficking and children and stuff I just kind of went no, we're not going to say that. We're not going to, yeah. you know, once upon a time, it probably would have been funny, but like at this point in time in our society, I just, no, shut my mouth. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. So it, and it's nice to have that filter, that awareness to be like, okay, no, no. Right. Yeah. And I think with some people, it's harder than it is for other people and not just in a joking manner in, in like something like that but also in the way that they speak to themselves mm -hmm. the thoughts they think about themselves and how that affects them are you familiar with dr emoto's work no who's you that know, it's uh, programming water <gasps> i've heard of yeah i've heard of that I didn't so, know that was the doctor behind it, but yeah, I'm it, obsessed with it. Was, it was Dr. Emoto and he had two glasses of water. One said love, the other one said the opposite. So whenever people walked past those glasses, they would either speak the word, they would think it, or they would feel the emotion. Well, the one that was positive when he froze it, he noticed that these beautiful crystals appeared. Where with the other one, it was just like, like a blob type, type thing. So let's think about, we're, 
greatly water, like how much? 90 something percent. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah. So when we say these negative things about ourselves, what is that doing to our bodies? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and that's that's something that we have to be conscious of and change the subconscious. Mm-hmm. So that might even be something that somebody would go to hypnosis for to learn how to to speak more positive than negative. So what's the Mm -hmm. most unusual thing you have seen somebody want to be hypnotized for? Oh, no. That's a tough question. Because usually people are pretty, you know, it's pretty straightforward. It's smoking, it's weight loss, it's um, fertility, overcoming fears and phobias, fertility, fertility was one of the coolest things I I had ever done with hypnosis to help women get pregnant. That was like super cool. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, you know, people have done past life regressions. That's pretty cool. That's kind of out of the box. Um, but you know, I remember hearing stories um, from my instructors, people had weird fears, like, uh, somebody had a a fear of bananas, somebody had a fear of having their wrists touched, Um, you know, just kind of wacky fears and irrational fears. um, And we can work with all of that. Um, So that's pretty cool. But one of I think one of the coolest things that I've seen just in my show, and I've got a lot of stories about like weird things during my show. But I had a guy I do a little uh, skit where I have them all um, believe that they're second graders and they're, and I'm their teacher and they're goofing off behind my back. So, um, but I can't catch them or they'll be in trouble. So I turn to the audience and I'm talking and they're goofing off behind my back. And then I'm looking at them and I'm asking, you know, are you goofing off? And I went up to one guy and, um, and I said, you know, are you goofing off behind my back? And he started talking in a different language. And I thought like, that's really weird. Like, why would like, he's just messing with me. He's talking in another language. I talked to him after the show and he said, that was really weird about the whole second grade thing. Uh, When I was talking to you, I said, yeah, what, what was going on? He goes, when I was in second grade, I was actually living in Mexico and I didn't know English yet. So he had really regressed to being back in that mind space where he only knew Spanish. And that's what, how he was talking to me. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So wherever you go in hypnosis, you go really go there. So where else have you sent people? Where else have I sent people in their minds? Yeah. Um, I send them on vacations all the time. Oh, I want that hypnosis. (laughs) (laughs) I love yeah. it. That's, that's, that's for that's for people who are who are on a really tight budget. You know, yeah. <laughs> don't get hypnotized and go on a vacation. So yeah. I, 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 how long would that vacation last? What if I want a week long vacation? Could you do that? I I mean, I could make you think it was a week long vacation, uh-huh. but you know, when you're in when you're in hypnosis, there's a time distortion. So you know. It, if say I have you in, in a hypnosis trance, a hypnotic trance for 20 minutes, that 20 minutes can feel like four hours or it could feel like five minutes. So if I guide you to your favorite special vacation spot, you know, you can be there and in your mind, you could think, oh, I feel so relaxed. Like I've been here a whole week. You know, you can experience that in hypnosis. So when you hypnotize somebody to go on vacation, do they actually get to like go to different places or do they, is it just a feeling like, okay, I'm here, you know, say I, I wanted you to hypnotize me to go to Kauai. What I now, and I've been there before, so it's in my mm-hmm. subconscious. So mm-hmm. could I actually in my mind go ahead in this hypnosis and visit the places that I would normally visit and feel like I was really there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Geez. How That's cool is that? Awesome. That's totally right? awesome. <laughs> yeah. Right? Because we incorporate all of the senses. So, you know, take yourself there and smell, smell what you would smell and 
feel the sun on your skin and the sand in your toes and smell the salty water, like incorporate it all. So you really feel like you're there. That's sweet. So is yeah. that something that we could do too? Like you were talking about, and I want to ask you something when you were talking about um, when we're waking up and we're going to sleep, is that the Zeta brain state? Or that's the Theta. 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 Yeah. 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 Cause that's the one that I, I read that we're in from the time that we're born until the time we're about seven years old mm-hmm. is yeah. when our, when our, our minds are most susceptible to accepting what we hear. And this is really funny. My youngest, he's 22 now, when he was like five years old, he would say to he would tell people I had amnesia until I was three. I said, you never had amnesia. What I realized, you know, he, he's a very smart person. What I realized mm-hmm. is because most children can't remember anything before three. Mm-hmm. So I realized that that's why he was saying I had amnesia until I was three. Because he couldn't remember anything. I just thought for a child, it was really clever for him to be like, I had amnesia until I was three. Yeah. Or even know the world word amnesia, a five-year-old knowing that word. Right. Yeah, that is strange. But yeah, and kids are sponges. So He's, even though they don't remember what happened during that time, it's in their programming. He's really, he's literally a sponge when it comes to knowledge. I mean, he just Mm -hmm. absorbs. I I homeschooled my kids and he's the youngest. So there's, let me see, there's like 10, 10, 12 years between him and my my oldest. Mm -hmm. And then my middle one, there's five, he, they're, two years apart and five years apart with my daughter, but I would be schooling them and he would be sitting on the floor playing and I could see him paying attention. Now with all of my kids, I used to print something off the computer or like a little worksheet for them to do and put on the table. He would never touch them. He, you know, when mealtime came, it just, you know, be squatted off the table so he could sit down Mm -hmm. and eat. But he just absorbed everything. I, 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 when I actually started homeschooling him, he probably could have started in second grade at five years old, but wow. because, because he wasn't writing, I had to take him through the basics of that. My other two taught themselves how to write, mm-hmm. but I just, I, I just wanted to share with the amnesia story. Yeah. And, you know, I think kids are so they're so much more just connected. They're just more aware when they're during that, those formative years. That's the, I sell crystals. And if I have amethyst, a rose quartz on my table, a child will come by and pick it up because they're very calming and very relaxing. I don't know know about crystals. A A little bit. Yeah, rose quartz is actually the stone of unconditional love. Amethyst mm. is known as the stone of sobriety. Back oh. in the day, they actually would make goblets of amethyst to drink their wine out of so they wouldn't get drunk. But <laughs> <laughs> they That's did. I, I, I guess it works. You know, I, mean, I read it. Who knows if it's true? Even if it's not, you know, my husband always says, never let, uh, never let the truth interfere with a good story. I love it. I love it. And what about like the placebo effect? As long as they're thinking that, it may but work. But it's just, it's just something because I believe that the the kids have knowledge, and that knowledge is we grow is lost. But they'll be attracted to the rose quartz or amethyst and pick it up with their parents to be like, oh, you don't need that. And I'm thinking to myself, if that child is picking that up, then I, I believe they're attracted to the energy. Yeah. And yeah, they, they do need it. Would you say that they're they're more open to like the collective consciousness? Yeah. And then I as, think so. as their rational mind gets more formed in the critical thinking and just adults start telling you you're crazy or don't believe that or or telling you what you should be believing or not believing right. that it like creates a a mucky filter 
Yeah, a, a dilemma. That's what, you know, like we're talking, you've got that set of brain, um, brainwave brain state of state of being where from the time you're born into seven, until you're seven, you, you're constantly in that state of mind. You know, now as adults, we don't experience it until we're falling asleep or we're waking mm -hmm. up. And that's why we can reprogram ourselves during that time. But yeah, yeah. definitely. I, I think the children are very much so. Um, my cousin has a son and he took a video of him like just staring off. And I don't remember what the expression on his face was. Like my cousin was kind of confused. And I says, maybe he sees the angels. I believe they can see the angels. You know, and I, I've seen yeah. videos where kids were like interacting with spiritual beings, you know, but then you're, you're told, no, you can't do that. You know, that that's, that's not mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, by the time you're seven years old, it's put on your subconscious and, and just gone. Yeah. I, I, I had one guest on, she, we were talking about schizophrenia. And her sister has it. I guess it's so bad. She's homeless. She's like in her forties, but wow. she was saying in, in other cultures, but see, the thing is, is that she's psychic, but what's happening is she's confusing the two worlds. Mm. And, and like uh, she was saying in another culture, a shaman would come in and take over and teach her how to utilize that. So I think our society by muffling a lot of this stuff down is hurting our children. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I think our, our connection and our imagination gets uh, beat out of us on an, or maybe that's not the right word. Um, it gets blocked. Or Taken gets, away taken away like it gets dismissed it really does get dismissed and there's so much value in it you know that's it's our creativity it's our connection it's where good ideas come from and and maybe you know maybe i don't i don't know i i think we're just programmed to not pay attention to it but i think honestly collectively we're getting back to that yeah i think, I, I think so too yeah i think so too i totally think so so Brenda, if people want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Uh, my website, uh, they can reach me at brendahypnotist.com. Um, they can send me an email as well. And, and I want to offer a special gift to your listeners. I've created a PDF on uh, creating affirmations. So talking about how to use words for your benefit to, you know, detox the, the negative words and to create positive intentions. So if you send me an email, I'll be happy to um, send your listeners out that, that the affirmation guide. Um, so my email address is Brenda, B-R-E-N-D-A at brendahypnotist.com. If that's not too long. <laughs> <laughs> Or um, I'm on Instagram at hypnobrenda.com or not just at hypnobrenda if that's easier. We'll go ahead and uh, put Brenda's email and her offer in into the description so that anybody who wants it can go ahead and access it. So they just cool. have to email you, right? Yeah, just email me and I'll send it right to them. Yeah, so in the description, her email, her offer, and her website, and I think you gave me your Instagram link. Is that what you gave me? Mm, I think so, yeah. Okay, yeah. so we'll, we'll stick that in there so people can go and find you. Yeah. So uh, are there any last thoughts you would like to share with our listening audience? Uh, I would love for everybody to know how truly powerful they are. And I encourage everyone to step back into their power and just, yeah, use, use the power of your mind for greater good. Know how powerful you are and use it. I right. Think is 
yeah, that's what I want everybody to know. That's good. That's good because people need to know that we are very powerful beings mm-hmm. and we need to realize that. Well, yeah. Brenda, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for being here. And to, you, our listening, and to our listening audience, keep on shining your light. And like Heidi would say, go out and be wild. How fun! <laughs> Thank you so much for being on at like short notice. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. I love to talk about hypnosis and I appreciate the opportunity to do so. Well, like I said, again, I can't say how how much I appreciate it because we were pretty much in a pickle. And I asked Heidi, I said, because I don't want to sit and blame, but she was supposed to get the guest. And I was like, Mm -hmm. okay, who's going to be on? She's like, she had contacted somebody, but they didn't get back to her. Mm. And she didn't have the chance to get anybody else. So, yeah. And she's not a well, fan of face. She's not a big fan of Facebook. Okay. So she, so she doesn't go on there. Um, if you want more speaking opportunities and you get to get on more podcast on mm-hmm. Thursdays, there's a speaker's playhouse. Oh, I can, I can go ahead and I can send you a link for that. It's an affiliate link, but I don't make anything because it's free. Okay. Don't just, don't just know that I sent you over there, but there's sounds fun. But people are looking, it actually is, it's fun. And Kimberly is like such a freaking hoot. <laughs> but you can go ahead and um, let people know your talk topics, you know, and if they're interested, they'll go ahead and connect with you. I found okay. I found quite a few guests for my show like that. But you just, okay. and, and the thing is, is, it's not always the same, excuse me, it's not always the same people on there. Sometimes it is the same people, Sometimes it's different people. So you just never know who's going to be on when. It's an mm-hmm. hour and a half on Thursdays from 1230, 1230 to 2 central time. Okay. But I can go ahead and I can send you the link. Do me a yeah. favor. Do me a favor. Message me on Facebook and remind me to do that. Okay. Just because I'll do that. I, they like, I make crystal jewelry and those college students, I didn't think they would come back for jewelry because last week, they, last month, they wiped me out, but they wiped me out again today. They wiped me out again today. So I I love it. (laughs) So I need to go ahead and make more jewelry for Saturday. Oh, cool. Cool. And, um, I just also wanted to I don't know, offer the opportunity. So Lindsay, my mentor that created the hypnobirthing, she also, she um, connects, she's a spirit baby whisperer. She connects with spirit babies. I love that. And I don't know if you would want her to be a guest, um, but she's always looking for opportunities to talk about her spirit babies. And, oh, I don't have the book. Okay. Yeah, Yeah. send her over my information. Okay. That is so freaking awesome. I know this one woman, she was pregnant and I don't know what she was doing, but she asked her baby what her name was. Yeah. And I thought that was so cool. I was like, wow. And did she so- get it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she did. Um, I wish I would have thought about that, you know, but I wasn't, my life was different back then when I had my kids. It yeah. wasn't, it is, was nothing like it is right now. It's just a total change. Yeah, but that's okay. We all go through seasons and phases and all of that. Well, yeah, that's so just like my, me and my daughter, every Sunday would get together and we'd have lunch and we'd go hang out and whatnot. But mm-hmm. now she's doing lift full time and Sunday's a good day for her. Or, or yeah. she'll rest on Sundays, so or not, and she feels bad about it. And I said, you know what? It is what it is. Change is not a bad thing. Right, you know, change right. Could be, change could be good, and we'll just we'll, we'll work with it. You know, we'll figure it out. No big mm-hmm. deal. Yeah. All right, Brenda. Once again, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate you. You're welcome, Joyce. It's a pleasure to connect, and um, look forward to staying in touch.
And I will, once this is, goes up, I will send you the link. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Okay. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Right. Bye.